Hi guys, welcome to Coffee and Questions. I'm Ellie DiGiulio and this is where Team Patron gets to ask me questions and I answer. I also have coffee. See? See? It's not just not just a gimmick. Uh, this month is the second month that we've done this and I'm really excited to do it. I'm really loving the questions coming in from our patron crew. So thank you so much for asking guys and let's get started. So as you may have seen on the internets, I was at Fan Expo Canada this weekend. Um, it's the first really big con that I've been to. I went to Ad Astra earlier in the year and uh, Con Bravo last month. And it was those both those cons were, were pretty small. I think we saw 4,000 people over three days at Con Bravo. And at Fan X, they have 100,000 people over four days. And so it was pretty intense. Um, I liked it. I, I liked that it was more TV and sci-fi fantasy based instead of um, anime based like Con Bravo. And I, I felt like there were a lot more of my, my people there. And I had a really great time being in the vendors room. There were a lot of authors that were guests out in the hallway and they were all together. So the people who came to their booths were, were looking for books and I didn't have quite that experience. I actually had people tell me they don't read. And after four days, I still didn't know how to respond to that. What do you do? What do you do with your free time? Um, but I, I did. I had a really good time. I sold almost all my stock and I met some really cool people. For me, that was the best thing. Like, you see a bunch of people in costume at these things. Cosplayers work really hard on their outfits all year long. And I saw some amazing stuff. I didn't take pictures because I always feel weird about taking people's picture without their permission or um, really asking people to take their picture because they're strangers. But the people who stopped at the booth were all really super cool. And I got to meet some people who are just now starting to do their own writing or they've been writing for a while and are sitting on it and aren't sure what to do. And so we talked about self-publishing, we talked about outlining, we talked about NaNoWriMo. And it was so wonderful to get to talk to some people and encourage new writers. I know that sometimes they that the new writers will come and talk to established authors and they get discouraged. And I would never, ever, ever want that to happen. I don't ever want to see that happen. And so it was great just to meet people. I did have a little bit of a problem in the everyday, because I'm so introverted and I stay at home all the time, uh, I had a little bit of a problem with the crowds, just not dealing with them specifically, but because I was out ten day, for 10 hours a day, uh, um, shilling directly to people, uh, I, I was a big drain on my energy and so I would come home and I I don't honestly remember a lot of of the nights Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday night I, I don't remember because I couldn't I couldn't hold it together once I got on the bus to come home I just totally shut off so I definitely want to go back next year what I would like to try to do is get in as a panelist as a guest um, not only do you get your table for free which is awesome but you get to be in the author's row and you get to talk to people, you get to be on panels, you get to talk about things that are in your expertise and, and meet more people. And that's really what I want to do. I want to, I want to connect with you guys. So I'm going to try to see if that's possible for Fan Expo. Um, I'm also looking at going to Dragon Con next year, but we'll see. I feel like Fan Expo is good practice for that. So, but yeah, overall Fan Expo was a really great experience and I would do again. So I think I make a bigger deal about my coffee consumption than I maybe actually consume. Actually, I thought that until this last weekend while I was at the convention because at home I don't really think about it. But when I'm out and doing stuff, things like how much coffee I drink and how much food I eat and how often, often I have to go to the bathroom really is brought into sharp focus. And I realized that I, was, I, I drank perhaps so we have, a, we have a liter French press, and sometimes I'll drink the whole thing. Uh, I was taking coffee to Fanex in my giant Captain America cup, and maybe sometimes one and a half of those, some, sometimes two if it's a really bad day. Um, it's become more of a ritual for me than anything else. Uh, I, I, I can't have caffeine after 2 o'clock in the afternoon because I don't sleep. So whatever I can squeeze in between when I get up and, and 2 is what I drink. 
And sometimes I don't I drink more, sometimes I drink less, but often I find that if I don't have coffee, I don't have a major like headache reaction. I'm sleepier because your body does respond to that withdrawal, but I don't really have a big problem with it. Thankfully, my body doesn't process addiction that way. Like when I, I back when I smoked, I literally just threw the cigarettes out the window of my car one day and decided I wasn't going to do that anymore and never had a problem with it. So I'm I'm grateful for that that lack of addictive personality. Um, I have a couple days if I go without coffee for a couple days, my brain shrinks a little bit, but then I'm fine. Like I just drink more water. So I I am not like put an IV in my arm. I make a bigger deal about it than it, than it is because it hyperbole is funny. But yeah, so d don't worry about me. I I'm okay. <laughs> I cook a lot. I used to go to the gym and watch Food Network while I was on the, the treadmill or on the elliptical because I really like food. I, I'm a, a self-described foodie, although I don't know that that word has any meaning anymore. Um, I've learned how to make a lot of stuff and there's food I make on a regular basis just here at home. But honestly, probably my favorite meal that I ever make is just plain old cheese manicotti. And Jess, if you're watching this, I please don't cry. Um, in high school, we would have these parties over at my friend's house. And we never, we weren't drinkers and we didn't do drugs and we didn't, we didn't, we were not that kind of cool kids. We were, we were totally not that crowd. And so when we would have parties, we would get together and watch anime and play Zelda and often have dinner. And so one of the things we started doing was making manicotti because it was a community activity. Because for to make it for like 10 people, that's a lot of food. And it's, for those of you who don't know, it's like a little shell that you have to stuff and you have to make the sauce and you have to make it in these big pans. And so it became kind of a tradition for us where we would make the filling and make the sauce and boil the manicotti and stuff them. and. Like, it, beca it became a thing, and I, I haven't done it in a long time because I, I am not in high school anymore, and I don't have a, a big circle of friends where that's the thing that we do, but I feel like this time maybe to correct that because it really is just so much fun, and, and you know, it's delicious, so maybe I need to get back to making manicotti in, in a group again. I don't play a lot of board games. I don't play a lot of games in general anymore, which I'm kind of sad about actually. I used to play a lot of video games. I used to be really heavy into tabletop RPGs and LARP. Um, but my family never did play board games very much. We did puzzles together and we um, we did you know movies and, and stuff like that. So I have a whole closet full of board games back at my dad's house. He still lives in the same apartment after 20 some odd years. And so all my, all my toys are still there. So we played Mousetrap and Dead and Drive and Clue and Game of Life and all that. And I'm gonna be really, really dorky and say that my favorite board game of all time is still probably chess. And I, I don't even know if that counts or if you're gonna be mad that I said that, but I, I played chess really like I played competitively in in junior high and continued to play in high school and I've kind of fallen off from it but I love it it's you know the game of kings but I have really fond memories of playing and like my mom I play with my mom sometimes and she always loses her queen right away she knows this is a problem I have fond memories of playing with my grandfather before he passed away um, and I'd really like to get back to it uh, I have a, com a competition mat regulation and everything um, and I'd, li I'd like to I'd like to get back to that. Although, a cool thing that's happening here in Hamilton is they've opened up a board game cafe where you pay five bucks as a cover and you go in and you can play board games as long as you want. And they sell beer and wine and food and coffee and everything. And we went down, Lena and I went down there the other day and really had a good time. Like, did you know that they have Shrek Monopoly and it takes just as long to play as regular Monopoly? It was awful. Um, but we played Scrabble and we played some games we never heard of and that was fun, so maybe I'll get back into it. That would be fun. Ooh. So the short stories have been strange. So I, I freak out about them every month because I, 
I almost feel like I've boxed myself in where I, I can only do Forgotten Relics stuff and maybe that will change next year. For right now, it's it's fine. Um, short stories are a completely different animal than, than a novel because you have such a teeny tiny amount of space and because I'm doing flash fiction, which is supposed to be a thousand words around there, um, it's even harder because a normal short story is about 7,500 words, which is quite a bit longer. Um, so the one that I actually, my favorite one to date has, is probably, um, the one about Jack. It's, I think it's called Ambrosia Makes Fools of Us All. And it's a long short story. It's the proper one. Uh, it, it was actually one of the stretch goals from the Kickstarter that we ran in, in 2013 to fund the cover for Court Riley. And it deals with Jack's, uh, misspent youth. So before he was, before he was who he is, he was a, a wild and crazy guy, and he was going to parties and had a friend whose morals were kind of ambiguous and wound up uh, in Aphrodite's bedroom. So that, that one was a lot of fun to write because I could play with Jack's character a little bit, and he's very stiff and staid, and back in the day he wasn't. So that was a lot of fun. Um, the, the one that I feel has come out the best is probably um, Hell's Dying Star that deals with uh, Hell as the ruler of the underworld having to watch her lover die. He's He's been starved of belief and it's his final moments. And so it not only reveals more about the Forgotten Relics world and how the, the belief system works, uh, it sets up Lucifer as a character for later and also gives give some more humanity almost to the supernals in, in the world. Because I, I feel like that hasn't really been touched on a lot. And so providing that background was was really important to me. And I felt like the story itself just, just came out really easily and it was it was very touching even for me. And finally, I do have travel plans. So my mother lives in New Mexico, which is, for those of you keeping track, like 2,000 miles away from here, um, really far away from my family, and it's, it's kind of complicated for me. I, I miss them a lot. And my brother just moved home, so my mom and my brother are in the same place. Um, so we're going to go, Lino's burning the rest of his vacation, and we're going to go down there for two weeks which is the longest he's ever been on vacation before. So we'll see if he can uh, be away from cell, regular cell service and regular internet, which is not easy to come by where my mom lives. Uh, but our plans are, are pretty, pretty lax, actually. Um, we want to go hiking, and we might go fishing, and we might drive to the Grand Canyon. It's only about six hours from where my mom lives. Lino's never been there. Um, we're gonna go to the hot springs down in Truth or Consequences that like everybody if you have a business down there it's based on hot springs um, and some of them are super fancy uh, like resorts and some of them are just holes in the ground and so we're gonna go to some holes in the ground ones um, I also got a couple of really cool opportunities so I only have I, I really want to get my books into libraries and the only library that carries them right now is the Magdalena library where my mom lives they have both Ink Changer and Core Riley, and they have invited me to come and do a reading and a book signing while I'm in town. So that's really exciting. And um, I also have the opportunity to go and teach at the local school. So my mom has um, my mom's an English teacher by trade, although she's a gardener and a farmer right now. So I'm going to go talk to her class. Uh, her English class, and I also am going to go and talk to the creative writing class for high school. So that's super exciting, and I'm trying really hard not to get nervous about it because I quit my teaching program. My master's was going to be in education. I quit because I didn't want to have to talk in front of a crowd. So that will be exciting, and I will report back. So just a note, if you are a library, if you are a school, please get in touch with me. It's elladejulio at gmail.com. I really would love to come and talk to you either by Skype or in person or get my books in the library. Just, yeah. So that's part of my Magdalena trip and I am really excited about it. It's going to be so good to see my family and all the the, the, two, the two children that my mom adopted. are. It's been a year now and they're part of the family and it's it's really great that I have this little brother and sister to go and see. So I'm really looking forward to it. 
All right, that's it for this month. If you would like to ask questions for coffee and questions for next month, and you are not part of Team Patron, please do come to patron.com slash Julio and sign up. It's as little as a dollar a month, and Q&A access starts at $10 a month with all kinds of cool stuff like free books and the Core Riley EP and a handwritten note from me and pre-orders and just all this really awesome stuff. So please come and join us. We would love to have you. And thank you so much to everyone who's already pledged and who's already part of the team. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you for making this possible. Bye.